Hi everyone, assalamu alaikum. Uh, I'm gonna talk today about the concept of the anion gap. What do we mean by anion gap? Uh, the importance of the anion gap and how do we calculate it? Uh, but before that, let me just start with some definitions just to make sure that we're all on the same page. Uh, when we say uh, anions, we mean the negatively charged ions, while the positively charged ones are called cations. In our body, electron neutrality is maintained, and that means cations are equal to anions. Measured and unmeasured, total cations should be equal to, to, uh, to total anions. If it is the case, gap should not be existing, right? And that's true. Gap does not exist in our body. Gap does not exist in our body. So why we made this up? Why we created this gap? We will be able to answer this in the coming slides. But before that, let me show you what is known as gamble gram. We've said that cations are equal to anions. The main cation in our body is sodium. In addition, we have other cations but present in low, in low concentration, such as potassium, calcium, and magnesium. And please note that the uh, unit used here is milliequivalent per liter. It is not millimole per liter. On the other side, the main anions are chloride, bicarbonate, and albumin. And again, the unit used here is milliequivalent per liter. It is not gram per liter. In addition, we have other anions that are present in low, in low concentration, such as phosphorus, sulfate, and organic acids. Okay, if the cations are equal to anions, the right side should be equal to the left side, right? Unless I have hidden and measurable cations or hidden and measurable anions question do I have to run all of these tests in order to detect the unmeasurable anions let's go back in time to 1970s where the concept of the anion gap started to be popular and I will ask you the same question again do you think running all of these tests is any e is an easy thing to do and the answer would be no the technology back then was not as advanced as of now. The running all of these tests was very expensive. Uh, the machines were not available. So doing this all the time was very challenging, actually. So they had to, to, to make this equation easy. Question, how can we make this equation easy? Well, uh, if you notice here, potassium, calcium, and magnesium they are present in low concentration. If the potassium is down from four to three, or if the potassium, or if the calcium, let's say, is up from four to five, will that significantly change the total cationic concentration? No, I don't think so. Say the same on the other side. When the phosphorus is up from two to four, or down from two to one, will that change significantly the total anionic concentration? The answer is no. So it is very clear that the contribution of these ions that are present in low concentration is a bit limited, right? So should I count them? Why just not making them as unmeasured, un unmeasured cations and unmeasured anions? Okay. In addition, the concentration of both side is actually very close so question can they offset each other can I just omit them and take them out of the equation and the answer is yes that will leave me with sodium chloride bicarb and albumin okay what if I decide to make this equation even more simple. This albumin, I just want to make it as unmeasured ions. This albumin, I want to dissolve it in the unmeasured anionic pool. But that will leave me with a gap. A gap between the measured cation and the measured 
anions. And this gap is what's known as an ion gap. Okay, from this diagram, you can tell that the anion gap is equal to sodium minus bicarb and chloride. And from this diagram also, you can tell that the anion gap is equal to the unmeasured anions minus unmeasured cation. These two equations are the final equations. Okay, so we've created this gap and we've set a normal range for it. So when you have uh, a hidden unmeasurable anions by, by, by that much, that will lead to high anion gap. That will be increasing the anion gap. So you have to think of certain diseases and to work the patient up accordingly. What if you have extra unmeasured cations? That will lower the anion gap. And there are certain diseases that can cause this. So you have to think of these diseases that lower the anion gap. So to summarize, there is no gap between cations and anions in our body. Running all the labs to detect any hidden and measurable anions or cations is expensive, unnecessary, and not available everywhere, especially when you talk about the old days. We've created this gap to overcome these issues. We've created this gap and set a normal range in order to be able to detect when it becomes abnormal. So that would help us formulating differentials and reaching the appropriate one. And I have to add that albumin is the main anion in the anion gap. That's it for my talk. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you find it enjoyable. I hope it was useful. Thanks again and have a nice day.